Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn how we are going to automate the different response codes for a particular API. So we are back to Jira cloud APIs and now we'll be starting to build our API test automation skills and we are going to automate different scenarios that you might come across while testing any of the APIs. We'll be writing the automated API test cases and the first one that we are going to look into is how you are going to test the response codes for a particular API. Now, if you go to the Jira documentation, right, that we have gone through a couple of times and we have also gone through how you are going to test the API response code, but then how you are going to approach it for different response code and how you're going to structure your test case etc that's all we are going to learn so what i missed in this documentation previously was that there is a switch to new api view right which is better view basically that's what i was into the classic view and here you will see in the classic view you get everything but it's not very well readable right so basically if you'll see in the classic view these are the response codes that we are going to test for a particular api for example get project features okay so project features so let's say for example we are going to test this particular project features endpoint right now there are different responses that are possible for this get project features endpoint okay so classic view will be visible like this but if we switch to the new api view in the right hand side click on the new api view it will be better readable okay so you'll see get project features okay this is the endpoint get project features you will see that it is a get call okay and then if you scroll down you will see it in a totally different format right so now here you will see that project id in the path parameters in the request okay what all is required you will see highlighted that this project id or key is required if you are going to use this particular endpoint for example here this project id or so you need a project id or key to get the project features okay then if you go below here you will see the responses so first one is 200 okay which is basically this response that is shown here okay this is the sample response when the success or 200 okay response will be available for project features then you have different error codes as well for example if the if the, if the request is bad right so for example it's not well formatted etc so you'll you will see the response is 400 return if the request is not a valid request so when you are testing any apis it's not just testing the positive responses it's basically validating that all the error responses that are documented in a particular api is it working as expected if you send a bad request are you getting 400 or not if you are not providing any authorization are you getting 401 or not okay if you are not having the permission to access any particular resource then you should get 403 forbidden and if the project itself is not found then it will give a 404 right so all of these response codes need to be tested right whenever you get any endpoint to test now in a project there will be multiple and many endpoints but this is sort of a starting point how you are going to test different response codes for a particular API. So let's quickly jump to the postman right. So now here what I'll do is here I have created Jira API testing okay and then we have this get project feature. So what I'll do is I'll create a new one okay. So I'll just rename it as old okay and let us create a new one. So what we'll do is we'll simply copy something so from get projects we have already seen that we have we are able to get the projects or fetch the projects using this get projects endpoint so i'll duplicate it so that all the authorization and everything is available there okay and then i'll rename this to get project features okay so i'll say get project features right now in the get project features what exactly is the endpoint for that so the endpoint is different right so if you go to the documentation here get project features the endpoint is rest api then you have to put the project id or key and the feature so simply copy this code okay and then in the postman we will replace to this point right oh, sorry it copied everything so we'll just copy the end bit there okay so just this bit okay and then the host we know that this is this is our host this is my site the rcv academy live.atlassian.net okay and i'll simply paste the rest and then we have to basically put the project id or key okay this is the variable you can set it as a path variable okay so 
here let's quickly see what is the project id or a key that we can use so let me close this and if we go and expand the sidebar so get projects will get us the projects okay and we used to get the id from the project so if i just send this request in the response i should be able to get some of the project with the id okay so let's see we have one of the jira project which is the id is this one triple zero one which is zoho crm sample project this is one of the jira cloud project okay that we have in our instance i'll close this and then i can replace this with the project ID. okay and then features so basically this is what we have to do all right and now if you go back to the documentation here okay you will see if you go to this curl if i minimize this okay so you'll see that this curl uses the url your domain okay and then rest api whatever we have copied the project id in features and then the user auth okay and then just the head okay so all of that is available there because in the auth because we have copied this from one of the existing requests so auth is already there okay if you haven't gone through and learned how to sign up for Jira and get the token to basically hit the REST APIs for Jira instance that you have signed up for, go through and watch the initial videos. So now we have got this. Now we can simply go ahead and hit this particular endpoint and see what the response is. Okay. So you'll see 200 OK is the response. That means we are getting the project features okay all the project features whatever the response should be there so this is 200 okay which means that we are able to hit this particular endpoint successfully and get the response 200 okay now how we are going to write the test case that yes everything is fine and we are getting 200 okay when we are sending the good request right or positive use case so we'll simply go back here right and we know that within tests we can go ahead and remove everything let me remove everything that we had previously because we had copied this so all the existing data that was there or script data that was there in the existing request has been copied here as well but when you'll create a new request it will be blank right so pre-request and test so now in the test you have to verify that actually this response code is actually 200 okay right so in the right hand side you have different snippet right you can write javascript by yourself but the easiest way is to basically scroll here and you will see that there is a status code code is 200 okay so we'll simply click on that and it will add that status code pm.test status code is 200 and then it takes the callback function which is basically the function and then followed by parenthesis and then we are just verifying pm.response.2 have status 200 right so this is one of the test okay so we'll simply send and see what is the test result okay you'll see it has passed status code is 200 which we have already seen previously as well okay now if say for example i'm expecting something else here so i say for example i'm expecting 201 you will see the test will fail because assertion error will be there and this is expecting 201 but got 200 okay now this is out of the box within postman so similarly once we go through the documentation right that yes for this particular request or for positive use case this is what is expected 200 but if the request is bad it should give 400 bad request right if i'm not passing any authorization it should give me 401 okay so how we are going to test all of these scenarios okay so the first way or the first thing is to basically organize your test okay so here what we'll do is we'll simply within say for example this collection we will create a folder okay so we'll say add a folder okay and we'll rename this particular folder as response code test okay and then within here and then you can basically specify get project feature response code test or something you know whatever is best suitable way to basically organize your test right we'll start with response code test for get project features and then i'll simply drag and drop this get project features within here okay now here we are get project features this is this test is for verifying 200 okay right so we'll simply rename it get project features and then i'll say 200 okay this is 200 now we want to test other response codes as well okay so i'll simply go ahead and duplicate this particular request and if say for example i'm not passing any authorization then i should be getting error 401 okay so i'll say for example i'll test 401 error response okay 
then i'll just duplicate this request and i'll go to the documentation i'll see what all response codes are support so 400 is bad request 401 unauthorized forbidden not found right so i can also name my test accordingly okay so i can say 400 bad request okay so i will rename this bad request okay and then this one i'll rename it as 401 unauth and this one you can say 200 okay right now in order to check that or in order to test your response code when you are not passing any authorization right so 401 unauthorized basically when the user is not authorized if the credentials are not correct if username or password are not correct or you're not at all passing those credentials okay so how we are going to test this now we are testing 401 okay so within the test we are testing what so we are testing 401 so it's not 200 anymore so we can simply rename it as status code is 401 and then we are expecting pm.response to have status 400 one we are not expecting 200 anymore in this particular test right and 401 unauth will come when the authorization is not correct right so basically here instead of passing a valid jira token i'll put some dummy characters there which is not valid token and then send this and make sure that the response that we are getting is 401 unauthorized right so you'll see now the response that i'm getting is 401 unauthorized and you will see the message client must be authenticated to access this resource and status code is 400 author unauthorized and if you go to tests here you will see or in the response sorry in the response and test result you will see that it has passed because status code whatever was expected is actually found in the rest okay so this is next test case now moving to the third one okay we go to the 400 bad request right similarly we'll go into the test okay and then we are expecting 400 right so we'll rename this to 400 and then change the status whatever we are expecting to 400 this is the name of the test okay this is what we are actually expecting and now auth will be in this case auth is fine right bad request is something we are not passing correct right so for example something in the body if it is sent that is not well formatted or we are missing some of the headers so for example the request itself is not valid it's bad okay so then we'll get the 400 bad request so let me say for example i just uncheck a couple of things here okay and then we know that this should be enabled in order to get this endpoint working so i'll save it and then send and now it should give me the bad request right so basically the request cannot be fulfilled due to bad syntax so bad request is any syntax error that is either in the body header etc that will give you uh, the error bad request and then if we go to the test results you will see it has passed right because whatever what, what we were expecting we are getting that okay in the body or in the headers we will get basically the response right so you can see you can see um, all the details in the response as well so i can clear that and send this again and then in the console response right you will see that what all is being passed okay and then you will see in the response body or uh, the request body there is nothing passed right so there is no json that is being passed in the response headers basically you will see all the details that are being passed there okay so this is briefly how you are going to prepare the collection then having each of the response codes tested okay and going through the documentation is the first and foremost thing that you will be required to understand what all is what all responses are supported and then based on those supported responses what all tests are you going to basically write and test right now here we have simply copied and pasted and then in order to test these response code we have just in the test we have changed whatever we are expecting as the expected response of that particular request right so if it is a bad request we have made the request bad by unchecking some of the details if it is a unauth request then uh, we are not passing any of the authorization we are keeping it blank or passing the incorrect value invalid value in the authorization and we should be getting 401 right so these are some of the functionalities of the endpoint that doesn't matter positive or negative but if a user is not passing the correct credential they should be getting 
the valid response the system should not crash at all right so these are some of the valid test cases around the status codes that you are going to basically test in your api testing and how you are going to automate with simple code that we have understood here okay so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching